Hi, my name is Janelle Lamelli, and you're in the workshop of Three Cat Max, Curiously Peculiar Puzzles, where I create, design, and paint and splatter the funnest puzzles to torture your friends and family with. A little bit about me, I have always been creative, and I got a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Sculpture, and then I went and got a Master's in Instructional Design so I can art my own instructions if I need to, but none of that actually helps with puzzles. And how did I even get into puzzles? Well, I was creating an instructional curriculum and I remembered this amazing experience that I had with my family when I went to visit them. We went to a coffee shop and found an artifact puzzle and I had never seen a wooden puzzle before, laser cut or otherwise. And I had so much fun putting it together with my family. So when it came time to design a project that middle school students could do on a laser cutter, I thought it would be so fun for them to make their own puzzle. So of course I had to make a demonstration puzzle for the students to see what to aim for. And it turned out, one, it was really fun. And two, it got me a custom order for a puzzle for retirement for my friend's father. Since 2018, I have been making puzzles on the laser cutter. So let me tell you a little bit about the equipment. Well, the very first thing is going to be the laser, which is right here. This is my Glowforge laser cutter, and it's fantastic because I can have it right in the house, which means that I can test out any idea that I can think of as soon as I design it. This is the Glowforge website dashboard where I have all of my projects loaded up. When I open one of my projects, it brings me into the laser cutting view. One of my favorite things about the Glowforge is that there is a camera inside, so I can literally see the material that I want to cut on. This menu on the left is the order, as well as the strength and speed settings, which if you're using Proofgrade, the settings will come up automatically as it reads the QR code on the material, which is really awesome and great for newbies that aren't used to using a laser cutter at all. I don't use proof grade very often, so I've got lots of my own safe settings. One of the strengths of the Glowforge laser cutter is this really simple to use interface. It's easy to teach a kid how to use it, or a grandkid, or a senior who's not really comfortable with technology. To balance that out, the biggest weakness of the Glowforge is that it is quite a bit slower than industry standard lasers like the Trotec. Reason being that the entire laser tube is connected to the gantry, which is the part that moves. So it is just limited to how fast it can move. I've sped this video up five times faster than I recorded it, and it is probably still slower than what a top of the line Trotec would cut. But for in-home use and for not massive production of items, a Glowforge is a great uh, prosumer model of laser. The other two tools that I use are my tablet and my desktop, which I use to design my puzzles and tweak all of the lines in them. I went through a lot of erasers when I used paper and pencil to draw my puzzles with. Then I bought a tablet to speed up production. It took a long time to find a good program to use, but this is Concepts Art App, which has a great interface as well as exporting in a clean SVG file. Using a pen on my tablet is a lot easier than trying to draw puzzle shapes on a desktop with a mouse. And another reason I like it is because I can easily uh, adjust the lines and the curvatures to the way that I like them without having to deal with very specific uh, node bits at this point. Here's an example of multiple undos. 
Say I decided that I didn't like the direction that I was going and I want to go back to where I started. I also like that I can turn off the layer view and check the original artwork or just a layer by itself to see if maybe I'm making puzzle pieces too large or too small. When I've completed the work that I want to do on the tablet, I will use Google Drive to export it to Inkscape. Here is my dark view Inkscape, where I will show you exactly how precise I am in adjusting every single angle and line. When I double click on here, it will show the nodes or anchor points. I will go through and manipulate every single one of these points to smooth them out, change the angles, adjust things so that everything, every line is exactly the way that I want it. And I'll do that for every single puzzle piece, as well as all of the artwork that I add to it. This is the outline view, which I use the most. That way I can see exactly every angle and where the laser will cut. One day I drove up to Atlanta to check out material suppliers and I happened to be in the right place at the right time to be gifted 100 pounds of, wait for it, six inch pieces of mirror acrylic that had been cut for an order and then the order was refused because there was a little bit of chipping on the edges of the acrylic. So yay, 100 pounds of acrylic. What am I supposed to do with 100 pounds of acrylic? I really like bright colors and you can't really paint acrylic, can you? Well, I found a reference in the Glowforge community forum about using art markers, alcohol ink art markers to color sealed wood. And I figured, hey, if it works on sealed wood, maybe it'll work on mirror acrylic. I found that I couldn't get really great coverage with pens because they left nib marks on there. But once I moved to bottled alcohol ink, it worked really great. And the less that I physically touch it, the better. So I used to use brushes and then I used um, the silicone basing brushes. After quite a lot of experimentation, I found that using gravity by picking up the piece and moving it right to left, even upside down, I could get more movement like I liked it without getting marks left over from tools. And you can literally wash it with soap and water like this. You just got to be careful not to lose any of the puzzle pieces down the drain, because that would be sad. The best thing about cutting with acrylic is that it's a solid material. There are no voids, no glue pockets, no knots, no random bits of bad veneer on my plywood. And if you have ever made laser cut puzzles, then you know that the main struggle is finding a high quality plywood that will laser cut well because nobody wants to spend hours trying to cut out these creative lines with a razor blade. Granted, the stink of a nail salon is something you do have to kind of get used to. I almost forgot to talk about the actual puzzles themselves and the art that makes them up. So you may have noticed that with the coloring, that chaos, it's actually really difficult to get very specific color in very specific areas. So I had to come up with the type of art that that didn't really matter. So now, instead of having a puzzle with the art being its own thing, my puzzles tend to be where the art, the puzzle is the art itself, or it makes the art itself. So in this case, this dragonfly the coloring is just a base to work off of. 
and the puzzle itself is what makes up the dragonfly shape. I really like this guy because his tail is articulated. Here's another example with a sea turtle where the puzzle makes the arch. And the octopus where it's the same thing but with more cutouts. I did figure out a way to add multiple colors, although it does tend to make the puzzle quite a bit easier. In this B puzzle, you can see how I cut sheets of black, sheets of gold, and sheets of mirror and teal to get all the different colors in it. Of course, it's kind of a pain to put them all together, but it's totally worth it in the end. And remember, save the bees! And here's a whole phalanx of bees for you. For these multicolor puzzles, it's a lot easier to do sets of them at a time. One of my favorite things about laser cutting puzzles is that that file that I made, I can use it for any material. I started this one out of acrylic, but then I thought, hey, this would be really fun to cut out of wood. I like to give back to the community that inspires me so much, so I shared this file in the free file section in the Glowforge forum. And I'll make sure that link is here today so you can get it. Which, hey, maybe you just print it out and cut it on a scroll saw. Or if you happen to have a laser, you can cut out this puzzle and have a Halloween puzzle. Have you ever heard of the Ikea effect? It comes down to if you build it or even have a part of building it, such as assembly like Ikea products, you will be much more connected to that item. So I put two and two together and thought, hey, wouldn't it be great if other people could engage in creating the puzzle by painting it themselves? And I sold a handful of these Halloween puzzles. If you're lucky, you got one. I call this type of puzzling salami slice puzzling because I started out with this Forever Valentine's chocolate box, made it into a shimmer heart puzzle, shared the file larger to cut from wood and paint yourself with a little customizable bit, and here is a future option that I'm going to make. And before we go, let me show a little bit more of my workspace. The most important part of my little one room tour, of course, is the Glowforge laser cutter. But there's also all of the material storage here and all the material storage under there, as well as under that table. Everywhere that there is a spot, there is some wood or acrylic hanging out there. I have multiple workbenches. Here is one and here is the other because the surfaces are always full. And you really know it's been a crazy week when all of my production is overflowed from the tabletops onto the floor. And then last bit is my photo booth, right there, where I take all of the photos that you see on my website, which, by the way, my website is 3catmax.com. There you can find my shimmery acrylic puzzles as well as the watercolor wood puzzles. Hope to see you there. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Bye.